Now, what I want us to do is, um, even though this looks really great, um, and we've answered, by the way, this question that I wanted to have a look at. Which one is it? Uh, part C. Do you see part C there? Find the total value of the fund when it is paid out on the 1st of January 2041. Right? So you just found that out. It's, it's this number right down the bottom. Okay? And if, I mean, I can show you the, the textbook answer. That's where they land. Okay? What I want us to do now is to um, see if we can use this model to answer some of the other questions. Okay? Let's have a look at part D. Part D says, the person wants to reach a total value of a million in superannuation. Does this ring a bell? You remember we've done questions like this before? Okay. Now think for a moment. Don't touch your keyboard. I want you to process this before we start interacting with this. How can we use this spreadsheet to find out when we get to a million? Have a think about it. What might we do? Wait, what do I have to do? Yeah, we're trying to answer part C. It says, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, part D. The person wants to reach a total value of $1 million in superannuation. Currently, I'm sitting at $630,024.99. What will I do to work out the eventual point when I get to a million? Any takers? You have to make it equal to a million. So like that equal to a million. OK, so I've got to get something equals to a million. Now, think about this, right? When you were doing this by hand, you've got your formula for the sum of a GP. You put in all the right numbers, and then this number would be your answer. OK? But now what? Sarang is correctly saying is, if I want to answer this new question, part D, I would make the answer a million and then try and backwards solve, right? You have to find M, okay? But I want you to think back. We don't have any sum of a GP formula in here, right? Everything is using this, um, oh, where did my cursor go? Using this recursive method. So I don't have some, like watch, if I just said, oh, let's make this thing a million, right? Nothing happens, right? Because it's, I've gotten rid of the formula, right? So that's why it's now, oh, you want me to say a million? Fine. The model is now broken. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that. I need a different way of thinking, right? What are you thinking, Max? I calculate like B3 times 1.1 equals a million. Ah, okay, so B3, that's up here, right? So what, um, what Max is going on is this idea of, do you remember when we talked about, don't worry if you don't remember what it was, but present and future value. Do you remember this idea? So I'll come to you in a second, Sarang. I just want to make sure Max's idea gets some time here. Present and future value is this idea that future value is this number we've ended up at. This guy down here, right? Present value is how much would I have had to have invested at the start just in one lump sum, so that I end up on this same number without having to do many installments. Okay? Now that's a very interesting question. It's the question of present and future value. But I notice it is not exactly the question they've asked me. Right? They have not, there's no language, at least as far as I can see, about what's the present value of my investment for 630,000, et cetera. Okay? Sarang, did you have a, s a suggestion, question? What do you reckon? Uh, remember when we said that mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't say equals something, equal, like you can't on the same line, you can't say, we've written equals already, right? So yes. Maybe a million equals like B3 times one. Ah, okay. So if, and this is the same thing that Max was saying, right? If I made, I could just solve an equation. Um, this cell here multiplied by 1.1 some number of times, some number of years, who knows, right? Gets me to a million, right? The problem with that is that is not how this situation works. That's imagining if I just put the money in and then just sit it and, and walk away. But I'm not sitting and walking away. This whole column B means I'm not sitting and walking away. What am I doing? I'm, I'm putting more and more money every time. Right? So let's try and think about this, right? Let me help you out. Uh, this is how much I end up with at the end of 2040. If I copy that whole row, and if you're in your spreadsheet, I invite you to do the same, right? I've copied all three cells on the 21st row. Okay? Don't do it yet, but what will happen if I just hit paste on the next row? It's gonna do that. What will the next row tell me? Same thing. It should tell me the same thing, but for the next year, right? Every time you go down a row, you go down a year. Okay, press paste and see what happens. What did it do? It gives us the value. Yeah, gives us the value for a new payment and a new interest calculation for 2041. Am I at a million yet? No. No, but I'm closer. I could just keep going, right? Let's, let's do that, right? I don't have to just add one row. I could add a bunch of rows. There's nothing stopping me. The computer will handle it all. 
And you're like, whoa, whoa, I definitely overshot, but you can find the year where it happens, right? Which year is it? 2045. 2045, right? Um, does it happen when we put the investment in? Sorry, the payment, I should say? Uh, no, it, it doesn't happen at the start with my investment. It happens at the end. You can see here this figure. It's the interest calculation. And you look at it, by the way, look at it again. How much is the interest calculation? It's massive. What is it? It, it gets you up to, it, it pushes past a million dollars. And that shouldn't surprise us because this is some astronomically large interest rate, right? It was 10%. Do you remember that? So 10% of 983,400. It's $98,347.06, I think, right? So that's why it's so massive and it pushes you over, okay? So what we've done is we've just modified our model a little bit. The question you just answered is part D. Uh, in fact, we've gone all the, end, the way to the end of part three. See that? At the end of which year will the superannuation be worth a million dollars? Answer, done, okay? Now, um, then we're going to do this last question. Okay, and then I'm going to see if you can um, have a go at the next one on your own. Part A, can you read it with me? Suppose instead that the person wanted to achieve the same total investment of a million dollars, so they still want to end up at a million, but they don't want to wait till 2045, they want to get there in 20 years. That's the original length, right? So in other words, where are we at 20 years? We're here, that one right there, let me highlight it. They want to get to a million dollars by that time, so they're going to have to, as the question sort of implies, they're going to have to increase their annual contribution. Do you agree? $10,000 a year didn't get them there. They're going to need to put in more. Okay. So here's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to modify our model a bit. I'm going to show you how, um, but watch closely. Okay. Let's just say, instead of $10,000, I wanted to make it, well, why don't you guys give me a guess? Ballpark figure. What do you think might be, it doesn't matter how wrong it's going to be because the calculations are going to be done by someone. 15,000. Okay, let's try 15,000. Okay. Now, I wonder if you notice our model is not set up at the moment to make it easy to adjust that quantity from 10,000 to 15,000, right? Where do I have to change 10,000 to 15,000? Where do I have to do it? I have to do it, I have to do it in this row because not 10,000, but then I have to also do it in this row. Do you see that? I've got to change that 10,000 to 15,000. Oh, wait, we're not done. I've got to change this 10,000 to 15,000. And this one. And this one's this going to take forever, right? We can do better than this. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Over here on the right hand side, let's make a new little cell and let's call it, uh, actually, let's call it payment because um, investment's sort of the whole thing. Payment. Okay? Now, at the moment, the payment that we do every year is $10,000. And let's change that to, I see what you're doing. okay, right, here we go. So, whoopsie daisy, I need to make that a bit bigger. There we go, all right. So what I'm gonna do is, you know how uh, this cell, it looks at the previous one. I didn't write down 21,000, I didn't type in 21,000, I just told it to look at this cell, which has 21,000 in it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this number here, I just want it to equal whatever the payment is. Okay, so you've written payment over there on the right hand side in a new cell. And I just say, yeah, make, make that your payment. Okay, so at the moment when I press enter, nothing should change, right? Because I haven't changed the quantity. Is everything okay? Yeah. Everything's okay, fantastic. But now here, instead of saying, again, plus 10,000, I'm going to say, don't, don't write the number all over again. Write this guy over here. Do you see that? Ah. So that way I don't have to write 10,000 again or change it to 15,000, so I'll hit enter. And if I've done it right, nothing has changed. Is everything looking okay on yours? So thumbs up? Okay. Now, one of the things we did before was we said once we've established a pattern, I just copy it and I paste it down. Okay. So don't do this yet. I want you to watch carefully because something's about to happen that you need to watch closely. I'm copying this formula. Now, if I did this right, when I paste it, everything should stay the same. I haven't changed the $10,000. Watch carefully and please don't do this on your spreadsheet because you'll regret it. Watch carefully. Did you just see that? Oh, I don't see a difference. Let me undo that. Oh, I see a difference. This is what it was before. This is what it was before. Okay, look carefully. Look at all the numbers, especially the one that I'm pasting, and watch what happens. Whoa. Hold on a second. Something, something has definitely gone wrong, right? 
something has definitely gone wrong and I can confirm that something's gone wrong because if I scroll down, my number was like 600 and something before, right? What happened? Now it's 574, right? Something's definitely gone wrong. So let's go back. I told you not to do this because it would make something go wrong on your spreadsheet. I'm going to double click on this cell because have you noticed double clicking shows you the formula and I want you to tell me what's gone wrong. Have a look closely. It added nothing. Why did it add nothing? I told it to add 10,000, didn't I? Ah, very good. Now, Tyler's on exactly the right idea here. You know how I went down a row, right? So everything goes down a row. The blue reference, you can see over there, C3, it goes down a row. The red reference also goes down. I, I don't actually want it to do that. Do you notice that? It's gone off of the 10,000. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to fix it. Um, have you got this cell in yours? This one you should already have, right? This is B3. Okay? See how we don't want the red cell to go down? We want it to stay put. Um, maybe some of you remember we've done this before. Instead of E3, I'm going to write E, watch closely, dollar sign 3. Now what that dollar sign tells Excel is don't move. Stay where you are. Okay? When I move the, the, when I copy and paste, Stay put, stay on row three. So I'm going to hit enter. And if I've done this right, it should actually work. If I paste it, aha, it's working. And in fact, I can paste it all the way down. And you can see I'm getting the same number every time. Does that make sense? Put your hand up if you've got your cell working with the dollar sign. Hands up, dollar sign, dollar sign. I see a few. What's happening? Not trying it? Or you're like, I'm too far behind. OK, that's fine. That's right. Okay, now, what we're going to do is, if you have got the dollar sign working, do the entire column. Go all the way, because we want to replace all of them. Okay, right. Now, Moe's suggestion was, let's just try 15,000. Okay? Now, if we've done this correctly, all of them will change. All of them will change. Are you ready? Go ahead and press enter. Did it work? Now, let's have a look. Um, I'm looking at this red number, right? Did I get to a million? It was not a bad, I asked you to guess, right? I got to in the ballpark, right? And I'm just like a couple of years off, right? So this is good, but I want to do better, right? Now what you can do is, you can just fiddle with this number, right? Maybe I make it 15,001, right? And then you see if you get there. Like, oh, that wasn't enough. A dollar, okay, is not going to get there, okay? Um, maybe you got $10, right? 15,010. Okay, it's not enough, right? Now stop. Pause right there. Eyes up. Eyes up. Not that far up. If you've already fiddled around, you'll notice 16,000 is too far. I mean, you know, it gets, it gets to a million. You're like, if I don't have to put that much in, I shouldn't, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something um, that even I didn't learn until like I was like a proper adult, okay? This, this, um, this fiddling with numbers and just doing it like manually, why are we doing this? We have a computer here that's going to do things for us, right? So here's what we're going to do. In, your, um, in Excel, and unfortunately if you're not using Excel here, I don't know what will be the exact buttons you need to press. Okay, so hands up if you are on Excel. Hands up. It's most of you, right? Okay, hands down. If you're on Excel, follow closely. You're on the Home tab up in the top, right? The Home tab? I want you to go over to the Data tab. If you're on Windows or Mac, it shouldn't matter. Head over to Data. And what I want you to find is, um, there's a button up here. I'm sorry my button's very small because my resolution's a bit high. There's a button sort of most of the way to the right. It says, what if analysis? Can you find that button? Um, just give me a thumbs up if you locate it. What, what if analysis? Yes. A few. Not many though. Like two, three. Yes. Have you guys got it? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Go and press that and you'll see there's a bunch of options there, right? Now the one that we want on mine is the second one down. It says goal seek. Um, it's exactly what it says. I've got a goal and I want to seek that goal. So I'm going to press that right there. Okay. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so it should be there. Uh, no, I don't, sorry. For, you will find it, but we'll have to dig around for it. Okay. Now here's what we want to do. Okay. Look, look carefully at your new menu that's come up. It says, shh. Set cell, and then there's some cell that you get to choose, to value, and then lastly it says by changing 
cell. Let me talk you through what that means, right? There's some cell you want to change to a particular, you want to, go, you want to be your goal, right? What was our goal? What are we after? A million dollars? When do we want a million dollars? By 2040. Now, go scroll down to where that is, right? For me, I highlighted that in red, so maybe yours is not as easy to find, but it's that one there. There it is. Cell C21. In fact, I'm just going to write C21. Whoops. C21. Now, what did I want that cell to become? You already told me. I want it to be equal to a million, right? Oi, I got the manual article. Uh, well done, okay, well done. Okay, so I want C21, I want that cell to become a million, and there's a single cell that I want to adjust to create that effect, right? Which cell am I changing? It's the one up the top, right? Um, I think mine is E3, right? So therefore, I'll just type E3. I'm going to get Excel to adjust that cell, and it's literally just going to test values until I get a million dollars. When you hit OK, Watch it. Watch the numbers actually crunch. Did you get there? Is that the number you got? Nail it. What I love is you can actually see Excel crunching it. It tries. It's like it tries a little number, then it tries a bigger one, and then eventually it gets there. Right? Say OK. So you can see this is the power of a model. Right? You don't have to guess at it. You don't have to do this by hand. That's why we put in the effort to understand all these formulas and such. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's the value that it's listed there. Yeah. So it's at 0.39, because the decimal goes on and on. And ah, yes. Yeah. So, ah, very good, yeah. If you look closely up the top here, if you, Zachy just raised a really great point. If you take your cursor, right, you see I can click on any cell, right? If you click on the payment cell, um, up in the top here, in the top left, you've actually got more than just the 39 cents that it's rounded off to. You've got, looks to me like, uh, 38.61568, etc. cents, right? Which is an accuracy that I think we were not willing to go and try and find, but Excel can do it. If you were to invest that exact thing, you'd be 24 cents over. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, I don't want to waste, like, come on, I'm, I'm wasting 0.14 of a cent here, and then some, right? Ridiculous. 